must sit in the George Clooney part of the chair. Good afternoon. Uh, in our last press conference that we did two years ago, we exposed government officials in South Sudan for their corruption. We showed evidence that the president and then, then vice president hijacked the country's fight for independence. We showed how they, along with other generals, looted its resources and started a civil war that's cost hundreds of thousands of lives and millions of people displaced. However, these governments and these government officials did not act alone. They received money, oil, transportation, and weapons from a vast array of people and corporations all over the world who have profited from this crisis. These profiteers include Chinese and Malaysian oil giants, British tycoons, and American businessmen. And without their support, these atrocities could never have happened at this scale. This is the first in a series of investigative reports that are the product of several years of work by our team at the Century. We've reviewed thousands of pages of legal documents, audit reports, correspondence, public records, and financial documents. We have conducted hundreds of interviews in more than a dozen countries. We've also endeavored to contact every, everyone named in this report. This morning, we met with some of the largest banks and other financial institutions, Standard Chartered, HSBC, Western Union. We talked about how they can take steps to ensure that they're not being used by the international tycoons, brokers, and multinationals complicit in the taking of South Sudan. I also want to say uh, we uh, spent a, a good deal of time in 2005, 2006, 2007 in Darfur Banks weren't always our ally and weren't always our friend. These, uh, the, the, these groups have been an incredible ally to us. They are spending billions of dollars in chasing down uh, financial crime. We found examples of warlords doing business with British citizens, UK nationals involved in possible embezzlement of South Sudanese state assets, and the beneficiaries of corruption buying homes here in London. So most of the actors named in this report continued to loot South Sudan with impunity. The methods they used to siphon off millions remain unchanged, and they have so far faced minimal, if any, disruption. In fact, many continue to live in wealth and luxury, even as millions of South Sudanese continue to suffer from the horrors of violence and corruption. The good news is the banks and governments around the world can create consequences and they can build the necessary leverage for systematic change in South Sudan. It benefits the people instead of the extraordinarily corrupt. In the past, banks have shut out terrorists. They've shut out drug lords. So now they can also be used to fight human rights violations. We look forward to continuing our work with these and other financial institutions in this regard. And there lies the problem. Because when you're dealing with Chinese state industries, that were used in the Iran uh, nuclear deal and since. Well, we're sitting in a city now that uh, groups like Transparency International... I'm involved in this and have been involved in it since the Darfur uh, stuff. I, I spent a lot of time in the region because it feels as if this is a region where it's been one of the most deadly regions in the world since World War II, and no one talks about it because there isn't really a great a great deal of attention. There isn't that much to get from it. Um, uh, geopolitically, it doesn't play as big a role as other places do. This is a country that I feel uh, that you know, th these people have every right to want to uh, live and not be raped and not be kicked off of their land and not be murdered. Uh, there have been, uh, uh, there's been a genocide and now there is a continuing uh, version of mass atrocities the likes of which we haven't seen. And, uh, and so I feel like if, if there is a value in having um, uh, a place in society where people pay attention to you, it's to, to take that attention and place it on people who can't get attention. So that's why I'm doing it. In, you know, but the years before 2011, before South Sudanese independence. And I believe they should do much more. I will also say that we are also 
uh, giving them information. They should, they have some of their, obviously some of their own information. Uh, and yes, they should do much more. I think uh, the United States should do much more as well. I think that uh, under every regime, uh, by the way, this is not a, a political issue so that I don't want it to become a political issue. I was, uh, 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 I was uh, doing this under the Bush administration. I was doing it under the Obama administration. And there wasn't a single time that I didn't say that the government should not be doing more. They should be doing more. But our governments, if they put their mind to it, have the power to stop what's going on. I don't know if they can stop it, but they can sure make it a lot harder. You've focused a lot of your conversation on what the UK and the US can do. China is obviously a huge player in Africa um, and in the oil uh, industry in Africa in particular. We have to constantly evolve because the game keeps changing. You know, we put a satellite up over Sudan and Abia in the middle areas to try and catch people committing crimes. We caught them. We found mass graves. We found troop buildups. We found, we actually caught a, an Antonov bombing villagers, put some of them on the front page of the newspaper. Um, and for a period of time, it slowed down the, their actions. We'd, have, we'd go down to South Sudan and the pilots would say, I use your satellite imagery to know where is safe to fly. And, the, and they were only committing crimes under uh, cloud cover or at night. Things had changed. We were, we were having an effect. But when nothing happens to them over a period of time, then they realize, well, if nothing's going to happen, you can't shame them into doing the right thing. So then our next move, if we're going to be smart about this, is how are we going to actually try to affect change? The next way you do it is say, well, okay, if you can't shame them, we can shame the people who do business with them because they're going to be 15 kilometers down the street in their $2 million house, and they're going to want to go to the Ivy. And we're going to say, oh, yeah, you're going to go to the Ivy. You, you're, you're paying for uh, tanks and bombs to, uh, to murder people. Now, how's that feel? Because you can shame them. You can make it difficult for, the, uh, for uh, certain financial institutions to, to kind of look the other way as opposed to saying, now, you can say you didn't know, and we're going to agree that you didn't know. You didn't look, but we're going to say you didn't know. Now you know. Now what are you going to do about it? Not so much what the banks are doing, because they're spending a fortune on AML and, you know, this moving, moving more toward what you're getting now. Companies don't want, their employees don't want to work uh, at a company that is necessarily harming people. Uh, uh, the people, the, 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 you know, the, the, the consumers don't want to buy from a company that is, you know, that is guilty of uh, uh, looking the other way for these atrocities. You're starting to see these elements play out in corporate America. Um, we believe that that's something that we can use to our advantage here, which is to say, well, we're going to expose you. We're going to expose you for, for doing this kind of business. The banks, quite honestly, got hit in the nose in 2006 and 7 and 8 and paid some fines for it. Well, they're our best ally now. They weren't before. Um, so we're, we're, I think that we're onto the right track. There are other people that are doing it. Um, certainly governments are doing it. Um, but we feel like this is the right direction to go, which is, you know, uh, follow the money. It's important to remember. Um, at some point, there has to be justice as well. It's a very important piece of this. Um, but when your house is on fire, first you've got to put the fire out. And so right now, we're just trying to get the, 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 this element, the atrocities themselves, to, to, to stop, to stop being funded. Then, uh, then the next step is to bring these people to justice, and that's, uh, that, that's a, another step. But first and foremost, we're trying to put the fire out. Don't worry, there's no press here.